traffic lights say turn a blue tomorrow. Shine the happiness down on my bed. The tiny island sex downstream. Cause the life of living is dead. All right. Welcome to our first full lesson in introduction to drone technology. Today, we're going to be reviewing programming teledrones with drone blocks. So, so, the first thing we're going to be doing is previewing the different features of the application. The different blocks you can use, as well as some of the other features. Then we'll be going over proper procedures of how to create a program in drone blocks and transmit the code to your Tello to have a successful flight mission. We'll also be going over some troubleshooting procedures to assist in this process. Next, we'll be going over some of the limitations of the platform we're going to be using throughout this class. And lastly, I'll be giving you your first mission as drone operators using drone blocks. All right, so we're going to look over some of the basic features of drone blocks. So if you look in the left hand side of the screen, you'll see these different colored blocks that represent your different options of what you can do in drone blocks. So we have takeoff, which you can click and drag. And so now you have a takeoff block and that will be the first command of every mission that you have is you have to obviously take off. So this will always be your first block. Then if you look at the green blocks we have navigation blocks. So that has things varying from setting your speed, flying forwards, backwards, left and right, up and down. You can also fly to coordinates, you can hover, and then you can do things like yaw as well. So those are all our navigation options. Then you see flips. We have different flips that we can do and we'll demonstrate those in a bit. And then loops, which allows you to repeat commands when you put commands inside loops. Then we have some logic blocks, which we'll get into in later videos. But those are um, different, well, we'll get into those in different videos, but that can make things a little more complicated and allow us to do some interesting things. Then we have math blocks, which gives us the ability to change different values that we're flying to, as well as use some mathematical functions and variables. So you can create a variable as you're seeing me do now. And that allows us, I'll create a variable real quick. So we can call it X. And then as you can see, that gives us a few different options. We can set X to a certain value, we have the value x and we can also change x by value. And then lastly we have our land block. So that's going to be the last block we use in each program. Now if you look over on the right side of your screen you should see three blue bars. And when you click on those you have several options. You can have a new mission, you can launch it, this is how you'll launch your mission. This also allows you to see the mission code. And so what that allows you to do is see the different lines of JavaScript. So for each one of these blocks, there's corresponding JavaScript, which is a programming language, that goes along with it. So by clicking Show Mission Code, you're able to see this JavaScript. Then you can save your mission, see all of the missions you've previously saved, and also a few other options, switching to metric units. I should say for the Apple version of this uh, drone box application, when you initially go on to begin using your Tello, which you may do in the future, you're going to have to use this right side uh, drop down bar to switch the application over to Tello mode. It should be said that 
you can use this application for many other DJI drones, not just a Tello. Then lastly, if you look on the top of the screen, you'll see battery, altimeter, which gives you your height, uh, pitch, roll, and yaw as well. So these are certain things that allow you to see what's going on when your drone's actually in the air. And we'll be looking at those later on. So those are all the basic features of this application. Um, oh, and then one more thing you can also see, so let's take away this hide mission code. And then in the bottom right corner we have a zoom function and a trash can as well. So if I want to start, so I can use it as such. Alright, so those are the main features of the drone box application. Now we're going to go over the proper procedures to have a successful mission with your Tello and the Dronebox app. So before I go into my uh, app, or before, before I start, let me say, before you begin executing this, these procedures to get your drone in the air, it's important that you program your mission first. So here I already have a basic mission programmed out and now I'm going to go through the steps to have a successful mission transferring this code to the drone and getting it to execute that code. So the first step is charging your batteries. As the battery starts to decrease, the effectiveness of the drone communicating with your phone is less and less effective. So, in order to have a successful flight, it's important that we charge the batteries of the drone beforehand. There's nothing like getting to wherever you're flying and realizing you have dead batteries. That's no fun. Alright, the next step. So, I have my battery inserted already. This is the battery. This is what, this is it. I'm going to insert it into the tello like this and make sure it clicks into place. It's important that it's snug and in place. The next thing I'm going to do is check all my propellers to make sure they're snugly in place. With a small drone like that, that might seem like an insignificant step, but taking these precautions will translate well when you start having bigger drones and it becomes seriously dangerous to start messing around with props that could fly off if they're not in place and so on and so forth. So from there, now that we're now ready to turn on our Tello drone. So when I click it once, what's going to happen is you're gonna see this green light. So you're gonna see these lights here. So first there's a green light and a red light. Now there should be a flashing yellow. If I don't get the flashing yellow, I'm gonna have to go again until I get the flashing yellow. Alright, so now that I have this flashing going on, it's time for me to go into the Wi-Fi on my phone. One second. Before I do that, I gotta start recording this. Okay, so now that I have this flashing going on, as you can see here, I'm going to go into the I'm going to go into the Wi-Fi. One sec, man. Two hours later. Three hours later. Can you move it along? I'm all out of time cards. All right. So now that's flashing, I'm going to go into my Wi-Fi on my phone. 
and connect to my Tello. So now I can see that my Tello is connected, or my phone rather, is connected to the Wi-Fi signal that's being emitted by the Tello. So now I can go to my next step, which is going into my Drone Blocks app. So here I am, I'm in my Drone Blocks app. And now I have to connect to the Tello in the Drone Box app. So I'm going to go to Connect to Tello and hit Connect to Tello. Now you can see that the uh, readings here on the top of my screen have all come, are now showing value, values. So I have an al altitude of zero centimeters. I have a battery life of 58%, 57%, and so on and so forth. The way to know that you have a strong connection is that your battery life comes on and is giving you something. If the other things are, are showing something but you don't have a battery life, that means that you do not have a solid connection and your mission will not work. So now I can go to my last step, which is launching my code. So I'm going to go into the top right corner, hit this hamburger icon. Uh oh. Come on. All right. Now I'm going to go hit this hamburger icon and hit launch mission and it should work. It's going up, it's following the command, and it's coming down to land. And so we've had a successful mission. So those are the steps to having a successful mission launch with your Teledrone using drone blocks. Next, we're going to go into some of the limitations of this platform. Alright. The names that has blown in the bed with the scratch it's all in. Okay, so we left off last time talking about the proper procedures to have a successful mission with our Tello drone and drone blocks. Now I'm gonna go over a few of the limitations of the platform we're using, both with the Tello and drone blocks. So right now I'm going to demonstrate, and you can maybe tell by the trees behind us, it's a little windy. I can feel it coming in the air tonight. You're a horrifying guy. Oh, no. So the reality is, is that with this platform, there's not a ton of stability built into it where it's able to handle the wind. And then also there aren't a lot of the different sensors that more expensive drones have for it to stabilize mid-flight. So right now all we're going to do is launch a mission and just hover for five seconds. And you should be able to see some of the movement that this drone has that other uh, higher end drones might not have. So here we go, we're going to launch and we're just going to hover. And you can see it's moving around some and sort of drifting a little. Alright. So that just applies, all I'm, all I'm trying to say by showing you guys this is that with this platform, when we launch these missions, there's going to be some movement and it's not going to be exactly precise uh, distances. So if we try to fly forward 20 inches because of the these di because it's not so stable and because of wind and things like that, it might not fly exactly 20 inches. So the next limitation I want to talk about is the range of this uh, connection between 
whatever your Wi-Fi device is and your Tello. So we're not gonna be able. To, it's important to know the range of this, so you're not programming missions that you can't execute. It would be like if you had a gun that had a range, you know, an effective range of 200 meters, a handgun, let's say, and you're trying to shoot someone at 400 meters out. That's gonna be an issue. Lee, come over here and look at that. We don't have defective cans, we have a defective pipe slot there. He hates these cans. Stay away from the cans. Same thing with this. We're gonna have to operate within the effective range. So what I'm gonna do now is show you guys a mission uh, outside of the effective range that I've found for this platform. So I'm going to fly forward 150 inches, hover for 5 seconds, and fly back 150 inches. What may happen is it might fly out that first distance, and then it won't be able to communicate the next commands of hover and fly backwards, and it will just sort of fly around aimlessly. So uh, let's take a look now and see what happens, alright? And one second. Make sure we're connected. Back to Tello. So, it should start going forward. Alright, so as you're able to see with that last mission, when we give the Tello too much information, it gets overwhelmed and goes a little crazy. Now, that might have been a result of the wind, or because I gave it a command that it couldn't execute because it was too uh, complicated because of the distance, or it could have been a little bit of both. Uh, it's sort of an art more than a science. I'm trying to figure out how to get these things to operate successfully. So. The last limitation I want to talk about is the battery life of these uh, and what happens as the battery starts to decrease. So for instance, one thing that uh, happens is once the battery gets below 50%, you can't do things like flips anymore. Also as the battery starts getting lower, it drains more quickly, so it seems like it starts to exponentially decrease as it gets below that 50% threshold. So here are a few things I like to do to help ensure a higher percentage of success. The first thing is I don't leave the battery in the drone unless I'm about to execute the mission. So what I do is I program the entire flight first and then I put the battery in, fire it up, connect it, and execute the mission. Then let's say if I want to change the mission or cha change some of the blocks or whatever, I'm going to take the battery out, do what I need to do in drone blocks, and then come back, put the battery in, and execute the mission. This way I'm saving the battery life uh, and trying to increase the chances of success. The next thing I want to talk about is the connection and different things you can do to increase the Wi-Fi connection between your drone and your device you're using the program on. So when I started out doing this it seemed like sometimes it would work and sometimes it wouldn't. It was hard to figure out why. One of the things that I found is that if there's any Wi-Fi interference between the device and your drone that can cause an issue. So if your phone has other applications open that are using Wi-Fi, that's gonna be a problem. So what I like to do as just a general procedure is clear out all of my other applications, turn them off before I start running drone blocks. Likewise, you're gonna to have to get away from any other Wi-Fi connections. 
So those are just a few troubleshooting things that I like to do to try to have more successful flights than not. And his wisdom, which was no, this will be the last.